Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for attending our webinar. And uh, let's wait for gen for those guys who are still being late. And we'll get started just in a couple of minutes. Thanks. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I think we can get started. But before we proceed, could you please uh, just send me, tell me that you can hear me well? I, everything is great. Okay, perfect. Thanks, gentlemen. Okay, uh, let's get started. Uh, so, again, I am happy to welcome you on our today's webinar. Uh, the theme of our webinar is Discovering Ceph, uh, how it's easily scalable and highly reliable storage platform. So let's go. So that's me. And uh, let me introduce myself. I'm Alex Baikowski, Solutions Architect here at Starwind. And at this session, we'll discuss what Ceph is, its benefits. We're going to work, walk through Ceph architecture and how it could be integrated into any environment. Also, we'll discuss, discuss our approach here at Starwind on working with Ceph. Okay. So that's our agenda. Again. And don't forget to ask questions at the end of this session. I'll be more than happy to answer them all. So to start with, I wanted to get a quick uh, talk about what's actually software-defined storage is. So software-defined storage actually separates the physical storage hardware data plane from the data storage management logic or intelligence. And it requires, it requires no proprietary uh, hardware components. So IT can use off-the-shelf, low-cost commodity hardware. So, uh, the follow, so let's talk about the following attributes of SDS that are typically seen in the market. So SDS may allow customers to build in themselves, providing their own commodity hardware to create solution with the provided software. Um, we work with either arbitrary hardware or may also enhance the existing functions of specialized har hardware. It nearly always enable the scale out of storage, not just the scale up, Type typically like of big storage boxes. Nearly always includes this, includes pooling of storage and other resources. Uh, may allow for the building of store of the storage and data services solution incrementally. 
Also, it should incorporate management automation. That's really important thing. Includes a self-service interface for users, and it includes a form a form of service le level management that allows you for the tagging of metadata to drive the type of storage and data services supplied. So let's proceed. It's a lot of technical stuff. So important thing about SDS is automation. Automation is a simplified management that reduces the cost of maintaining the storage. Another thing is standard interfaces. APIs for the management like you no know, SMIS or VVOLs, which like Starman has, or anything else that are there in the world. Virtualized data path such as block, file, and object interfaces that support application written to these interfaces. And I, as I've mentioned before, scalability, really important, scale up or scale out. And transparency, the ability for storage cons consumers to monitor and manage their own storage consumptions against available resources and costs. Okay, that's just a quick SDS talk. And finally, what is Ceph actually? Ceph is an open source so software defined, defined solution platform designed to provide highly scalable object block and file based storage under a unified system. It provide, provides an effort, effortless integration of the cost efficient called object storage without a need to, uh, for installing several uh, third party software components. And of course, it fulfills modern storage needs and exceeds them. It has no single plane of failures, and you can build as big clusters as uh, you can like think of at the moment. Ceph's uh, Rados provides you with data storage scalability, so thousands of clients, client hosts accessing petabytes to exabytes data of data. Each one of your application can use the object block or file system interfaces to the same RADIUS cluster simultaneously. So you can have only one cluster and your applications could use or could uh, connect to it, 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 could work with it like with the object block or file system interfaces at the same time working with only one cluster. Another great thing is Ceph's Crash algorithm, which liberates storage cluster from the scalability and performance limitations imposed by the centralized data table mapping. It replicates and rebalances data within the cluster dynamically, eliminating the these tedious tasks for administrat administrators while delivering high performance and infinite scalability. Ceph was designed to have no single point of failures, as I've mentioned before. So, and it is hardware agnostic. That's what we like here at Starwind. Starwind is hardware agnostic solution too. So, and another great thing, you can uh, run Ceph on everything, starting from small computer boxes, even small IAM SOC systems, to enterprise servers. So let's take a look at Ceph architecture. So the lowest layer is RADOS, as we've talked before. And RADOS is a reliable, autonomic, distribute, distributed object store. And Ceph RADOS typically consists of large collection of standard commodity servers, also known as storage nodes. 
and we'll talk about it a little bit about that a little bit later so the next layer is libra dos it's a library allowing application to directly access access radars with support of uh, C, C++, Java, etc. Next great thing here is uh, RBD, Radar's block, uh, block device. Ceph's, Ceph allowed you to create uh, a, an RBD in its pool so you can mount it on uh, the industry standard standards Linux uh, distributives uh, to work with it like a block storage, like a block device. For example, if client doesn't support RBD, uh, you can like use something like iSCSI target, which supports RBD or, or something else to connect it to like something like Windows systems, which uh, Windows system, which doesn't support RBD yet and work with the Ceph cluster. Another thing is uh, a Ceph Rados gateway, which allows you to work with Ceph storage using a RESTful a Amazon S3 interface or app OpenStack Swift, which is compatible with API. And of course, there is a CephFS file system. It's a POSIX compliant distributed file system with a Linux a kernel client and support of Fuse. And for the for the CephFS, uh, you should create at least one server of metadata. So on top of the, uh, let's talk about small one, for example, block one node of the Ceph. On top of the OS, daemons are running which have different cluster roles. For example, one, self, one server could interact as monitor and uh, as an OSD. In a bigger deployments, daemons are running on different machines. However, and in other servers could inter interact as MDS, metadata servers in case you need CephFS. However, small clusters where you have limited amount of machines uh, could have two or three roles installed on the same server. And of course, it depends on the computing power of the server. So as we've f figured out, there are uh, three roles uh, in Ceph. It's monitor, it's uh, it's it called like monitor daemon, which run uh, OSD, that's object storage daemon, and metadata server. So let's discuss that. What's monitors? Monitors are the brain cells of the Ceph clusters. They are <coughs> in charge of cluster membership and they are they have a consensus algorithm for distributed dis decision making. Uh, the actual monitors do not serve stored object to the client. They are the first point of contact from the client. And after that, the client talk directly to, to the OSDs actually. OSD at the same time, it the uh, object storage daemon it's a unit which uh, stores the actual data, actual object, and uh, compute, uh, works with the uh, client request, you exchange the data with the other OSDs. Usually each uh, OSD is one disk. So we should talk about another important thing over here in Ceph is the pool. Pool is the logical uh, container to organize uh, data, user data for storage. So for example, there are different Ceph pool, pools such as replicated pool, 
where you configure replication uh, level. It could be two or three. That means how many times your uh, object will be replicated to a different OSDs or erasure, erasure coded uh, pool where your data being uh, compute to a hash sums so that you can have a uh, <coughs> better recovery uh, level. For example, there are erasure coded factor like four plus three. So three uh, OSDs will contain hashes and three of them can fail action. Let's, let's proceed. And that was a quick discussion about of Ceph. And now let's jump in and go to our approach to Ceph. Actually, next week, I'll, I, a little bit more, a week and a half, there will be a VMworld in Las Vegas, and we are planning to release a new product of ours. Uh, I, it's like right now we are calling it Fractal Sun or Enterprise Storage Appliance. Uh, so originally Starwind started as a software defined storage with our virtual SAN. However, we're like developing ourselves to then we released our hyper converged appliance. And now we're planning to release enterprise storage appliance, which is going to be massive, massively scale out storage with the help of Ceph. And of course, it, it's, going, it's going to be high performance you know, and will have a low latency using RDMA, which Starwind has. And of course, it will, we're going to add uh, NVMe over fabrics to controller nodes, which are on this layer, or we are, or another thing we're, we're going to work with is Intel SPDK. So let's just uh, talk quickly about the architecture over here. On the top layer, we will have small, so uh, this part is actually our Starwind capacity nodes. It, it is going to be a small, we will scale actually the node down to a size of the one disk using a disposable uh, components and it will help us to build a massively scale out storage. So each part of the actual Ceph cluster over here will be a small node, size almost one disk, or maybe a little bit bigger. On top of that, we'll have our Starwind controller nodes, uh, which will help us uh, using our caching and Actually, we will Starwind will work with Ceph directly on the object level. So, using our lock like, structuring, we will just work directly with Ceph on the object layer, and it will increase performance of the actual of the Ceph. And afterward, using Starwind multi-protocol, which we actually have any protocol you want, iSCSI, ICER, etc. The uh, client will connect to the Ceph cluster and work with it. And of course, on top of all of this, well, that's another great thing we're working on, we will have our unified management, which will help you to manage everything from the single pane of glass. That's actually another thing I wanted to talk about. Oops, I'm sorry. Just a moment. So that's our Starwind management. That's the solution uh, which will provide you the capabilities allowing you to get full control of your environment, as I already mentioned, from the single pane of glass. So, 
And another great thing of this solution is that it will allow you to manage Windows cluster, Ceph cluster, Starwind cluster, and another sense using our multi protocol and uh, support of diff different APIs. And of course, uh, looking at the solution on the previous slide and on this one, uh, we will have a huge enterprise storage appliance, which will be managed from the single pane of glass. And actually a tiny sneak peek before our presentation and SAF related, of course. Uh, let me just show you quick monitor that's our small Ceph cluster. We're testing. It's just always running, and it's for our actually uh, re research and development team. They're working with this cluster at the moment, and that's our monitoring tool. As you can see, Fractal Sen. We have some warning on our Ceph cluster since we don't have enough space. I think. So over here you can see storage capacity. Oh, we have enough of that uh, space location. So actually how the space in the cluster located across the different poles. And of course, as uh, worth mentioning over here that SAF has right back pool. That's the, like, the caching pool and the there is a cold pool, a razor corded pool, as I mentioned before, where I can actual the simple HDDs or so it uh, this pool is built by uh, with the help of simple HDDs so that's a pretty good dashboard so you could monitor yourself of course we will have uh, you over here uh, management tools of, to work with theft to provision more storage to self, etc. So you can see over here monitors. We have three in our system, and we have our OSDs over here. That's a tiny sneak peek. You will see more on the VM world in Las Vegas. Let me jump back to the presentation. And Right now, time for your question, questions, and I already see the question from the poll. From Paul Winkler, let me just read it. So does Starwinds have, have support for M2 drives in RAID 6? <laughs> and I'm ameliorating and sophisticated wear leveling. So actually, uh, M2 drives probably will be supported with our enterprise storage appliance nodes, which are small nodes on the, on the like small, really small on the disposable hardware. Uh, and we have plans to add this support. And uh, speaking about the rate level, since SAF is a distributed software defined solution, it doesn't have like uh, Rates itself, you can build a Razor coded pool using M2 drives. In any case, we will add the support of M2 drives and with the Razor coded pool. I think it's a possible thing to do. Okay, do you have some additional questions? Okay, so I, I have another question. So will enterprise storage appliance support KVM? Yes, it will, as I think I have forgotten to mention it. Yep. Let me jump back. 
Uh, of course, our enterprise storage plans will support different hypervisors, so industry standard hypervisors such as uh, VMware, Hyper-V, and KVM. So another question is about actually how Star went with, oh, okay. Uh, so what would be the minimum number of nodes to justify Ceph? So actually minimum number of nodes, I guess, uh, which you could can start with, uh, oh, <laughs> okay, one by one, gentlemen, <laughs> Paul, uh, I will start with the Paul, Paul's question. What would be the minimum number of nodes to justify SAF? Of the minimum number of nodes, I think, would be like uh, three nodes, even you can start with two, but the good number to start with is three to have a three number three level of replication in SAF at the best uh, thing to start so is three mo small nodes each one the size of one disk actually I think it will contain one disk and then you can scale out as much as you want okay let's proceed again Will it support the Zen server? Don't I don't have actual information about the Zen server. However, I think in case you want to connect to enterprise storage appliance, you can always connect it using the ISCSI sense where we'll provide all the protocol industry standard protocols. I don't see the problem to connect to a it via iSCSI or NFS, for example. Uh, okay. Okay, so another question. Do you offer this uh, in as a service offering? Actually, it's we're offering our plans at the uh, full solution, which we sell, and of course we support. We are the single point of support in this case, as with our hyperconverged plans. So we are supporting it, and of course we do everything client in that client needs, so that his system works perfect. Okay. Just a moment. Uh, Jeff, have a question. If we can't virtualize this, uh, what do you mean by this? Could you please clarify? And I'll just move to other questions. Okay, another great, great question. Can a disposable components handle huge workloads? Uh, Yes, they can since they the one small node which can consists of a disposable components is only one part one small part of the cluster and the workload will be distributed among the whole cluster whole the cluster and of course the the layer where star one controller nodes are uh, they will handle the best, but they will give give the best performance, and leaving the always uh, the actual small nodes without huge, you know, workload. Hmm. 
uh, so the question from Jeff is uh, if we can virtualize what we what I have on my screen actually I think you of course you can build similar solution uh, in the VMs like as a test environment of course we actually started testing it using the VMs each VM had interacted as a small OSD uh, we had some some monitors and we have a bigger VMs which interacted as Starwind controller nodes of course you, you can always start your testing from the virtualizing it however in the next the next steps always should be like uh, testing the hardware part that's what we are we were doing before my actual webinar and we're still testing different parts uh, another question from Paul uh, if the nodes only have one disk can the disk be a RAID uh, now actually the disk is in terms of the hardware rates, I would say the disk is the part of the array, part of the pool. Uh, and the pool at the same time, I would say it like RAID array. Not exactly, but it's like, so the actual self cluster interacts as a single pool, which have a really big fault tolerance level and can handle a lot of fails <laughs> uh, another question from Jeff if this uh, actually we will upload video on our YouTube channel and on our website which you can always visit and we'll walk through that uh, our video Uh, another question from Paul so do the disks have to be the same size actually uh, no but uh, that but Ceph will take like each OSD will be provisioned the same size so you can like put a disk one terabyte uh, you have like Ceph cluster with five one terabyte disks and another way is two terabyte disks so the two terabyte disk will be provisioned with only one terabyte. So Ceph will get only one terabyte, will use only one terabyte from this disk. So, gentlemen, do you have any additional questions? Okay, I think we're good to go. Uh, okay yeah <laughs> paul thanks again so how the is the capacity of ceph cluster calculated if you say uh, if you have say 10 nodes with one terabyte disks for example you have if you have uh, configured two-factor replication on the ceph layer ceph pool it will be like very right, simple rate 10 or a similar solution divided by two with the replication factor two it's something similar it depends on the actual pool you're planning to use
of course we're going to have more webinars again so since we are planning to inject self into our lives into our storewind lives so we'll have we'll actually we have webinars not each week i think each, each month we're publishing our webinars and of course if you like them you can visit our uh, social media like twitter uh, we have twitter youtube and facebook pages so <laughs> I think we can have Paul and where are you located and I'll talk with our marketing team maybe to have the webinar later in later time oh okay Australia uh, I think we'll work on it okay gentlemen if you have any questions we'll just you can always ask them maybe you can ask them on our social media you can ask them now if you still have some if no uh, I think we'll cover more in our upcoming webinars at least you can say hi right now to your mom for example <laughs> I would say hi to my friend uh, Alexandra and Thank you again. Thank you for your time. It was a pleasure for me to be here for you. Okay, bye-bye.